the luxury lifestyle of the following prosperity preachers is beyond anything you can imagine. T.D. Jakes lives in a $5.5 million mansion in Fort Worth, Texas. You drive a wonderful car and you have a plane. How do you explain that? Joel Osteen lives in a $10.5 million mansion in Houston, Texas. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a nice place to live. When your wealth is gained off of distorting the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's a lot wrong with that. And Joel Osteen does not apologize for his wealth. Do you make any apologies for your grand piano? I really don't, Oprah. We just feel like this is God's blessings. Stephen Furtick lives in a 16,000 square foot mansion in Reddington, North Carolina. Elevation Church pastor Stephen Furtick is building a 16,000 square foot home in Weddington. Creflo Dollar lives in a $3.5 million mansion. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. But when your wealth is gained off of preying upon the hopes and fears of hurting and sick and desperate people, there's a lot wrong with that. I think if you need to sow a seed right now, this anointing is present. Jesse Duplantis lives in a 35,000 square foot mansion. Jesse Duplantis, for example, lives in a 35,000 square foot parsonage. Kenneth Copeland lives in a $7 million mansion and owns multiple private jets. Tyler's one of the greatest guys. He made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. The slavish lifestyle those prosperity preachers live is built upon the backs of poor and desperate people from their mega churches and all around the world by promising them wealth and prosperity if they give to their ministries. God wants to bless you, and the way you step through that door is the sowing of seeds, spiritually, physically, financially. But it's all a lie. Prosperity gospel has no interest in the biblical gospel. It only offers financial prosperity, physical well-being to desperate, desperate people. When I let go of something in my hand, I'm talking about your money. God always lets go of something in His hand. Click on that donation button, and when you do to sow $1,144, Jesus is the banker. Let's receive our evening offering this evening, give you a chance to raise your income. Second Peter 2, Peter says it flat out, in their greed, they, meaning false teachers, will exploit you. To pray on the sick and to pray on the poor and become wealthy by lying to them? Is there anything more wretched than that? And then attributing it to the Holy Spirit? The prosperity gospel is the worst. It is the ugliest. The peddlers of this perversion stand guilty of selling a false gospel, trafficking in heretical wares. Those prosperity preachers even go so far as to make their own doctrine of giving. For example, you'll often hear them say, every time you give, you're lending to God and He will repay you. I love that scripture. It says, when you help those in need, you are lending to the Lord and He will repay you. That's what you do each week or every time you give, you are lending to God and I know you've seen in your own life, God knows how to repay you. There is no scripture in the Bible that actually says that. It's all made up. This deceptive strategy is also used by T.D. Jakes. See, God is my business partner and my giving to him is his cut. And if I rip off his cut, why should he bless me? I started giving on that level so that God would owe me. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying? You can't handle that. I started giving on the level where I put God in debt, and God said, I'll owe no man. I started giving on the money that I wanted to make. I started giving on a deal that hadn't closed yet, and that God had to open up the windows of heaven and pull me out a blessing because he wasn't going to be in debt to me. Those prosperity preachers are running a Ponzi scheme by promising wealth and a life of abundance to everyone who gives, but only one getting rich is the guy at the top. A lady sent me $10,000 three days ago. Last night, I'm walking into the church and a person came up to me and gave me a check for $14,000. Do I believe what God wants to bless us? Yes. But when you go to the conference and you ask people to give money so you say you do it cheerfully because if the Bible does give and shall be given unto you free and giving is a major part of the whole Christian. If do you believe there's so many things to raise to me in this tree that more will come back to them? Yes. I think that's what they mean by prosperity thoughts. These people are charlatans and they are counting on their followers and their listeners being biblically illiterate so that they can fall 
for their schemes. Prosperity preachers are banking on the fact that you don't know the word of God. The more biblically illiterate you are, the easier of a target your money is. Their model is simple. Give me your money and God will multiply it in return. No, but you worry at all that, that sometimes your message will be heard by someone in the most dire circumstances. You see, sort of roulette wheel, a sort of gamble with God. Okay, well, I can't pay the rent, but I'll give it to Joyce and we'll see what happens. Do you worry at all that I, I totally know I don't worry about that? Joyce Meyer says, I, no, to I totally don't worry about that. Well, I'm sure she doesn't, but she should. Because right now, even as we speak, there are thousands of people all around the world who are watching TBN and Daystar and Lasea Broadcasting and the Word Network and all these things. And they are hearing this endless drivel of saying, you send us your money and God will give you a harvest. And there are people at home, they are poor, they are sick, they are desperate, they have sick children. And so in desperation, they get out their checkbook or they get out their credit card and they send in money to these multi-millionaire preachers. I had enough money to buy a beautiful Cessna Citation jet, cash. And since there's so much jealousy in this room tonight, that I can feel over this. A few weeks later, I bought another one worth three times what that one was, cash. I tap you over my blessing, folks. Who fly in private jets and who live in multi-million dollar homes. I've owned three different jets in my life and I and used them and just burning them up for the Lord Jesus Christ. The God we worship had no place to rest his head. You think Jesus Christ would roll around in a Rolls Royce? Uh, I think he would've. But the preachers that are preaching in our pulpits are asking for a hundred million dollars for an airplane. I really believe that if Jesus was physically on the earth today, he wouldn't be riding a donkey. The greed of those people is driven by their lifestyle. In order for them to continue to live their lavish lifestyle, they need to have a constant source of revenue. And as such, they will lie on the Bible, they will lie on God and twist the gospel in order to get your money. If someone is helping you, don't you ever get your head down about that. If someone is help, you need help feeding your babies, God bless your darling heart, then you ought to be helped. But I'm going to tell you something, you need to be tithing off that help. That's your increase. You need to be tithing that. Well, dear Lord, Brother Copeland, I'm in poverty now. I know it. I'm telling you how to get out. That's the gospel. This is a false gospel. It is why the thing has grown, because it lies in promising success and health and wealth. If God is speaking to you to sow $1,000 seeds tonight, I'm asking for those amounts because I want to see your faith released tonight. When you sow larger amounts, you release faith. And when faith is released, God Almighty will release the harvest. Men like my uncle, they are devouring people. It's utter deception. There's no place for it in the church. No pastor should ever do that. There is no model for, hey, give all your money to, to my thing. That's a scam. There's 21 people in this building that God said will give $1,000. But I'm going to give you this handkerchief out of my prayer room. And if your breakthrough don't come, you can call me. Because I know what I'm talking about. They urge you to sow everything you have and God will give you back a hundredfold. But it's all a lie. When your drive is about earthly possession, wealth and prosperity, you will do literally anything to get these things, even twisting and distorting the word of God. You will lie, water down the gospel and compromise the truth of God's word in order to get rich and stay rich. There's plans that you have that ain't going through until you make that sacrifice to the Lord. He said 21 people in this building. That's what he means. He said 21 people in this building. How do I know God is talking to me? Because you got it. That's how I know God is talking to you. Because it's in your account right now. Because it's on your credit card right now. That's how I know God is talking to you. Well, I ain't never gave that before. You know what? In order to get something you ain't never had, you got to do something you ain't never did. Prosperity preachers have made Christianity a laughing stock. One writer says the prosperity gospel is Christianity's version of professional wrestling. 
Those prosperity preachers have indeed made Christianity a laughing stock. Just as the Bible says those people have crept in unnoticed and turned the grace of our God into a license for immorality. Even celebrities are figuring out that those prosperity preachers are all in it for the money. Listen to this famous rapper and hip hop artist T.I. explaining his unfortunate experience at a church. And I can't remember this pastor name, but he must have been the tithe whisperer. His entire sermon was about sacrifice, giving money, giving money. Now, listen, I understand that churches live off of the contributions from the congregation. I get that. Now, I want you to hear very carefully to what he said the pastor told the congregation to do. Then he said, what I need right now, I need 20 people to give up $1,000. Let's count. 20 people. Stand up if you... And so people start standing up. Are you a thousand dollars? Yeah, that's what they said. Twenty, twenty people. Twenty people, a thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm looking around. Never seen this before. And at this point, I see, I know exactly what's going on. And I'm, <laughs> I was I'm, looking at you like this. <laughs> I love this man. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I see what's going on, and I can't believe everybody's going for oh, it. My I can't believe. I'm telling, I'm telling Chains, you better not. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, what? Change like, man, I go to church. I go to church. This is what I do. I'm like, hey, listen, man, well, give me a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> now, keep in mind, he's on a radio show with unbelievers. So this is not a good look for Christianity, but things only get worse. I want you to hear what he said the pastor told the congregation to do once again. But the problem I had with the guy, this is this is it. When he was counting the 20 for the thousand dollars for people, people, when he said this, this is when I really got mad. Come on, y'all. Get your blessings heard. No. No. Are you telling me? Fame. <laughs> Keep going. My God. Yep. Needs me to pay you $1,000 so he can hear my blessings? So he now, can hear my prayers? Now, y'all know that's how the Vatican was built. Yeah, man, but see that what I'm is, saying. This is plagued. This is plagued many churches for a long time. But yeah, like that, like that to me, like I'm like, all right, bro, you done lost me. Now I would submit to you that these prosperity preachers are the most wretched, callous, heartless, selfish, narcissistic, uncaring, wretched people alive on the face of the earth. Principle four: You determine the size of your harvest when you sow your seed. Do you need a big harvest? Then you sow lots of seed. Do you need a big harvest? Then you sow lots of seed. So if you have cancer, or if you have a sick and dying child, you had best dig deeply. Because the bigger miracle you need, the bigger monetary seed you'd better sow. Dear friends, sowing and reaping is a biblical concept. It is. But more often than not, when the Bible talks about sowing seed, the seed to which it refers is itself. So if you want to sow some seed, by all means, I heartily encourage you to do so. Sow this seed into the lives of people and watch God bring a harvest. When, when God restored the truth of healing, the devil put a signpost that said heresy. Yeah. When, when God restored the truth of prosperity, the devil put a signpost that says heresy. Yeah. And the church back off from the truth. Yeah. We shall not back away from the truth. No, no. And, and, and you can tell the, how powerful the truth is by the amount of controversies against the truth. What he's saying is that those people who actually care about the real gospel, who care about sound doctrine, who have a love for good theology, you know, who rightly divide the word of truth and warn people, about the appeal to fallen human desires. He is saying those kind of people, those are heretics. They're, they're heresy hunters. They're legalists, they're Pharisees. But no, the people to whom he's referring that put up these signposts, these warnings about the appeal to health and wealth are actually the remnant of God's faithful people who care about sound doctrine and who want to teach people the truth. God needs you saved. He needs you filled with the Holy Ghost. He needs you well, and he needs you strong, and he needs you rich. Dear friends, God loves us, but make no mistake about it. God does not need us. He is the Alpha and Omega, 
the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the wonderful counselor, almighty God, prince of peace. He spoke the universe into existence. He knows all of the stars by name. He has need of no one and no thing. God loves us, but he does not need us. We need him. And any man who's preaching a gospel that says that God needs us is preaching a different gospel. Preaching a different gospel. And a different gospel does not save. We know why the Holy Spirit came to convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment that they might believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to bear witness to the historical truth of the gospel as Acts 5 says. He came to, uh, to empower those who preach its saving message, 1 Peter 1.12. We know the work of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is faithful to the gospel. The Holy Spirit would never misrepresent the gospel. So wherever the devaluing of the gospel truth is uh, visible, we know that's not the work of the Holy Spirit. The world of those mega-rich prosperity pastors is insane, and those pastors do not like people asking too many questions about their wealth simply because they do not operate in the realm of transparency. After all, why would anyone who twists the word of God and misrepresents the gospel be transparent about the financial gains they made by doing just that? As way of illustration, I want you to hear the story about Stephen Furtick, which is a prime example of what those mega-rich prosperity pastors do in order to stay rich. So maybe you've been feeling sorry for your scars a little bit lately. Pastor Stephen Furtick has made generous giving a cornerstone at Elevation Church. It's crazy. We just passed the mark of $10 million given in the lifetime of this church to organizations outside of the church. But Pastor Stephen will not tell you how much he gets paid. So when I started asking about it, he preached about me. There's an investigative reporter. He's been calling around and people have been calling us. Furtick and his top lieutenants refuse to tell the people who pay his salary, the congregation at Elevation Church, just how much he makes. We don't know. And the reason we don't know is because they won't say. Warren Cole Smith writes books about the evangelical church from his home in Charlotte. The real problem is that there is a lack of transparency. Stephen Furtick recruited a so-called board of overseers to set his salary. Well, that board of overseers looked to me to be a paper tiger. The board of overseers is made up entirely of other megachurch pastors just like Stephen Furtick. The, the financial well-being of all of these guys are intimately intertwined. That means Stephen Furtick agrees to pay them to preach at Elevation, and they pay him to preach at their conferences or megachurches. They attend each other's conferences and are compensated for that regularly. Elevation executive pastor Chunks Corbett told me, yes, pastors get paid for church appearances, but he said the pay is, quote, small in scope and no, he will not disclose the amounts. So when Stephen Furtick held his Code Orange revival last year, three of the headliners, Pastor Stovall Weems of Jacksonville, Perry Noble of Anderson, South Carolina, and Kevin Gerald of Seattle, were all board members at Elevation. That's three of five votes that set Furtick's salary. It, yeah, they scratch each other's backs. That's not accountability. That's Chris Roseborough runs Pirate Christian Radio from his home near Indianapolis. All of the accountability in Furtick's church goes from the top down. Elevation Church was founded by Southern Baptists, got loans through Southern Baptists, still gives missionary money through Southern Baptists. But unlike many Baptist churches, there are no elected deacons or elders here overseeing the church. None of these guys are actually living in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. There is one leader living in the Charlotte area, Chunks Corbett. And if you want to understand Elevation Church, you need to understand his role. Chunks Corbett is the center of Furtick's organization. In 2005, he incorporated Elevation Church. In 2007, Corbin Property Southeast, a for-profit company. In 2008, he signed on as trustee for the Jumper Drive Trust that held the Furtick's home. And in 2009, he incorporated Sunstand Still Ministries, another nonprofit. All four list the same principal address, 11416 East Independence Suite Inn, the location of the Matthews Elevation Church. Chunks Corbett refuses to speak on camera, but he spent 90 minutes with me answering some questions. He praises Stephen Furtick for his generosity to Elevation Church, but he refuses to release the church's audited financial statement or its bylaws, which govern the church. 
That's in stark contrast to another local megachurch, Forest Hill Church. Forest Hill spells out how its elders are elected right on its website. We then screen them, we interview them, look at uh, their experience here in the church and uh, their commitment to Christ. And Forest Hill releases its audited financial statement. We want to be beyond reproach. We want people to see exactly uh, what this congregation is giving. Many other evangelical groups like the Billy Graham Evangelical Association and Samaritan's yeah. Purse release their tax returns by law. So if you give, you might not completely approve of what Franklin Graham gets paid, but at least you know and you get a say. The Baptist State Convention of North Carolina puts a salary chart for preachers right on its website. You can look up what Baptist preachers get paid depending on the size of their congregations. The highest pay for churches over a thousand members is $231,000 a year. But megachurches like Elevation are in a category all their own. They hire compensation consultants to look at other megachurches and no one is releasing those numbers. It's almost like money laundering if you ask me. I invite you to my mega church and you preach a 40 minute sermon, if we can even call it that, then I give you 100 to 200 thousand dollars, depending on your caliber and fame of course, and then you do the same when you invite me over. And then the same cycle repeats over and over again within a circle of wolves in sheep's clothing. And the most disconcerting part about all of this is that all of that money is coming from donations of the poor and desperate people are pouring into those prosperity preachers. This is sickening, ladies and gentlemen, and an affront to God. The prosperity gospel is a poison. There is no prosperity gospel, dear friends. There is no social gospel. If you have to add an adjective to the gospel, you've got a different gospel. There's no prosperity gospel. There's no social gospel. There is just the gospel. The gospel. Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. On the other hand, spiritual swindlers will one day be punished for their blasphemous conceit, Jude 13. I truly hope that one day these prosperity preachers come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and that they would do just like Zacchaeus did when he received Jesus Christ into his house, when he was truly saved. You know what it did? He took all the money that he stole from the poor people and he gave them back a hundredfold. That is the heart of a man who has been truly regenerated. Do I see Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, T.D. Jakes, Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis give back all the money that they've made on the backs of poor people? Absolutely not. But I truly hope that one day they come to a saving knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and stop this whole nonsense of the prosperity gospel which is nothing but a false and distorted gospel that leads people to hell. This is it for this video and let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Make sure to share this video with a friend and multiple people on Facebook to open their eyes to the lies of the prosperity gospel and prosperity preachers. If you'd like to have one of those t-shirts, subscribe to our Patreon. We are giving them out for free to all of our Patreon members as a token of our appreciation for your support and prayers. Make sure to follow us on Rumble because you never know when YouTube might take this channel down. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, with love in Christ, your brother John Henry with the Gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm.